Did you know that a foster parent is not allowed to get their foster child's haircut? We'll stick around and I'll go over seven surprising things that you cannot do with a foster child. Hi friends, I'm Ana Leonora and together with my husband Jason, we are foster parents in real life. And here on my channel from the fosters, we do foster parenting life together and raise awareness for the foster care system. So if any of that interests you, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel below for more from me and to join my growing family here on YouTube. The first thing you cannot do with a foster child is you cannot take them out of the state in which you live. And you also cannot take them on vacation. So what's crazy about this is my husband and I live within like an hour, hour and a half of Myrtle Beach, but technically Myrtle Beach is in a separate state from where we live now. So we wouldn't be able to take our foster son on a day trip to Myrtle Beach unless we got explicit permission from his bio parents and from his social worker or Department of Social Services. And the other thing with vacations is technically, I guess you could take them on vacation somewhere within your state, but we live in North Carolina. North Carolina is a very big state. So from where we live to the other side of the state is like eight, nine, 10 hour drive. So if we wanted to go on an overnight vacation to like Asheville, which I think is eight or nine hours from us, we would have to have permission. And this is for a couple of reasons, but it's mostly for the safety of the child. If something were to happen, um, an emergency of some sort while you're not in the same state or somewhere near the county in which their parents or the social workers live, that could end up being very complicated and a big problem. So if you're gonna take them out of state or on vacation, you have to have permission. Depending on the case and what the circumstances are of that case, you would either need bio parents and social services or just social services permission to take the child on vacation. So if you're planning on going anywhere or even a day trip somewhere out of state, start talking about it with the social worker in advance because you do have to have permission for that. The second thing you cannot do with a foster child is you can't let them go on sleepovers. So that means they can't go to like summer camps, school camps, camps or church camps that are sleep away. Um, they can go to like day camps if they're in the area, but no sleep away camps. And sleepovers are really iffy and kind of touchy. So if a foster child is going to sleep at somebody else's house, in the past, social services used to have to do um, background checks, CPS checks on everyone who was gonna be at the sleepover, all adults that were gonna be at the sleepover. Nowadays, there's something called prudent parenting, which allows you to send them on a sleepover for one night. But if something happens at that sleepover to the foster child, it kind of falls back on the foster parents for having allowed that. So typically you don't wanna let them spend the night anywhere without permission in advance. And if the, it is gonna be overnight with someone for more than 72 hours, so like, for example, we could probably let our foster son stay with my parents or my husband's parents for one night, but if it was gonna be more than 72 hours, we would have to talk to social services about it and they probably would want to do a background check or they would want you to utilize respite, which is another foster family that is already licensed. They've had all the training, all the background checks um, and you would just utilize them like a, a long-term babysitter. So the child would go to another foster family, but just for the amount of time that you needed them to. So really, it's such a hassle. Really preferably no sleepovers, no sleepaway camps, summer camps, school camps, church camps, unless they're just daytime camps. None of that without permission. Number three is that you're not allowed to sign the child up for any sort of sports team or dangerous activities. So that means like football, baseball, um, I, hockey, any sort of contact sport, um, or really any sports team in general, like I would imagine track and field would be included in that. You're not supposed to sign the children up for any of those things without permission, and there's a couple reasons for that. One is because sports can be dangerous and you need the biological parents or social services permission to allow the child to engage in dangerous activities. Or the second reason is because reunification is the goal of foster care and we want to minimize causing any extra trauma or damage to these children. And if they get super involved in a sports team 
and it's not something that's realistic for the child to continue when they're reunified with their bio families. Like bio parents can't afford to pay the fees for the sports teams or they're in a different school district and they're gonna be moving different schools. It might be more traumatizing for the child to get them involved in something like that and then have to take them away from that when they do get reunified with their bio parents. So they are allowed to be on sports teams if you have permission from bio parents and or social services, depending on the circumstances of the case. Number four, you cannot place your foster child's photo or pictures of his or her face or put their name anywhere on social media or anywhere in older types of media like newspapers, magazines, things like that. So there's a couple reasons for this one. One, we wanna protect the location of the child. So often, usually, bio parents don't know where the foster child is living. Um, and sometimes, in a lot of cases, they actually don't even know where the foster child's going to school or daycare, things like that. They try to keep the foster children in the same county as the bio parents, but that's not always uh, possible. So bio parents don't always know where the child is living and that's for the safety of the child and the safety of the foster parents. So if a child is posted on social media at a certain location or they're put in their school newspaper, things like that, it's a risk for the bio parents um, in the high risk cases to be able to find those children's locations. So they just like to minimize that. The other thing is that if you think about media with children, bio children, you always have to have the parent or legal guardian's permission to print a child's name or face on the news, in newspapers, in magazines. And technically the foster parents don't have any legal rights to the child. So the bio parents or DSS who has temporary custody of the children would have to agree to something like that anyway. And they're not going to, um, again, DSS won't agree to something like that for the safety and privacy of the child. So it's just a big thing. You don't ever use a foster child's photo on social media. I know some people or foster parents do, but you'll see they'll blur the face out or they'll put a sticker over it or something, or they'll get just the back of their head. No photos of their face, their you know, images of their face on social media, and you will not see foster parents use the foster child's real name on social media. So often foster parents will come up with a nickname of some sort and refer to the foster children as that if they're gonna be posting anything on social media. The fifth thing you can't do with foster children that I find people are often surprised by, but if you think about it a little bit more and I'll explain it, it starts to make sense. So foster children are usually in foster care for reasons of abuse or neglect. And that does in many cases include sexual abuse. Oftentimes with foster children, sexual abuse isn't known right off the bat. There are cases where children come into care for known sexual abuse. But a lot of times children who are in foster care have suffered sexual abuse and that information doesn't come out until much later. Young children don't know how to talk about it or they're afraid to talk about it. So that information usually doesn't come out till much later. So just given the nature of what these children have been through or potentially have been through, there's very strict rules around sharing private time. So there is no co-sleeping. There is no um, bed sharing or anything like that. And it's not just between the foster child and the foster parent, it's also between siblings. So even if they're in the same biological sibling group, they cannot share beds. Foster children have to have their own bed, okay? And they can't have their bed inside the foster parent's room even. We don't share rooms. The only time I think um, that it's generally accepted or okay for the foster child to sleep in the foster parent's room is if they are under one year of age. So they're an infant having to get up frequently in the night for feeding and diaper changes. But again, they have to be in a crib. They cannot co-sleep or bed share with foster parents. And the other thing with that is also bath time. Like I know a lot of people with bio kids, if you've got two young bio kids, you often will throw them in the bathtub together and bathe them together just to make bath time a little bit easier. Foster children get their own separate bathing time. Um, they don't share baths with siblings. They don't share baths with anybody. They get their own separate bathing time. And 
there's also very strict rules around um, who can share rooms. So even with siblings, there's very strict rules around, sorry, I just almost spilled my coffee cup. There's very strict rules around um, what ages and genders can share rooms. So I think it's different state by state, it's different county by county, but I think the general rule of thumb is if they're under the age of five, if both children are under the age of five years old, they can be opposite genders. But once one or both of them are above the age of five, they can only share a room with the same gender and then they have to be within five years of each other. So a six-year-old girl and a 10-year-old girl could share a room, but a six-year-old girl and a 14 or 15-year-old girl could not share a room. So there's very strict rules around no co-sleeping, no bed sharing. It's very important because you just don't know what kind of sexual abuse, if any of these children have been through, and it's very important for them to learn boundaries around private time. So I know that one sometimes surprises people. Often young kids get scared during storms or um, just want the comfort of their parent in the night. And yeah, there's no, there is none of that. So we have a great noise machine in our foster son's room that we just turn way, way up. And he never wakes up during storms, so it works out well for us, but he usually doesn't need us in the night, and if he does, I have a baby monitor with um, a microphone on it, and he knows that he can just call out to us, and it will wake us up, and we'll go to him if need be. The number six thing that sometimes surprises people that foster parents cannot do with foster children is foster parents cannot make any medical or educational decisions for the child. I think the only thing we had any control over is what daycare we were able to put our foster son in. And um, it's the same with schools. It's whatever the school district is for the foster parents. So foster parents do have a say in where they go to school or where they go to daycare, but that's kind of where our say stops. So foster parents are expected to get the foster children two medical appointments to make necessary medical appointments, but we can't make any medical decisions. So anything having to do with um, referral to a specialist, any surgeries, any medications, things like that, we don't get to choose. And biological parents, as long as reunification is still the goal and parents are still working towards reunification, then bio parents, get to remain um, in charge of medical and educational rights. So they get to sign off on any sort of medical need. They have a right to know about and a right to be at all medical and dental appointments. And they have a right to have a say and an involvement in like IEPs, things like that for school. Of course, it, once reunification is no longer the goal and bio parents are sort of out of the picture. DSS sort of assumes that role. Um, and DSS also has a say in some of the medical and educational rights, but technically bio parents maintain medical and educational rights for the children, even though the foster parent is the one who is in charge of making the appointments and getting the children to the appointments and making sure that they're up to date on all the things that they need for their health and education. And the number seven thing that is surprising that foster parents cannot do to foster children or with foster children is they can't get their hair cut without permission. Now that kind of is an umbrella, it includes all sorts of altering appearances. So foster parents cannot sign off on any piercings or tattoos, they cannot um, dye the children's hair, and they cannot cut the children's hair. They can't do anything that alters that child's appearance without explicit permission from bio parents and or social services. So this is done different ways, again, between different states and different counties. But in our county, it's we have to have bio parents and social services permission to get our foster son's haircut. So it's all very complicated. Basically, it means even if you have a little boy whose hair is growing super fast and he really needs haircuts to keep his hair out of his eyes every two to four weeks, then you need to get permission every two to four weeks to go get the haircut. Um, and obviously, things like piercings and tattoos for older children, um, you know, teenagers, that's obviously 
that makes more sense, right? No putting holes or permanent ink on a child without explicit permission. But yes, that includes haircuts. And I know that that one's kind of surprising, but yeah, we cannot take a foster child to get a haircut without bio parents and social services permission. So that about sums up the seven most surprising things you can't do with a foster child. If you guys are interested in learning more about becoming a foster parent or more about the foster care system, you can look up foster care in your particular county or you can visit adoptuskids.org. I will link that one below. And you could consider subscribing to my channel because foster parenting life and raising awareness for the foster care system is what we do here on From the Fosters. And I'd love to have you join my growing cyber family here on YouTube. As always, friends, until next time, go out and continue to shine your light into the world. Mm -hmm.